Hello everyone, this is Darsh Chitalia. Welcome to my channel, Darshonium. In my last two videos, we have studied about Dober Einer's law of triads and the New Lens law of octaves. In this video, we'll be learning about Mendeleev's periodic law. This law was stated in the year 1869 by a Russian chemist, Dmitry Ivanovich Mendeleev. On the basis of his law, he formulated this table that you can see on the screen, which is called as Mendeleev's periodic table. Mendeleev was a great scientist. This is because he was the first scientist to successfully classify all of the 63 elements that were discovered at his time. So what he did was he arranged all of the known elements in increasing order of their atomic masses. After doing this, he studied the physical and chemical properties of each and every element. When he found that two elements had similar properties, he would place them vertically in a column which he called as groups. And if he found that elements had dissimilar properties, he would place them along a horizontal row which he called as period. So you can see in the table there are many groups and many periods. This table is called as Mendeleev's periodic table. Now, let us learn the statement of Mendeleev's periodic law. The statement is, the properties of elements are periodic functions of their atomic masses. Now, let us understand the word periodic. It is the phenomenon that occurs at intervals. To understand this better, let us take the example of sunrise. We all know that sun rises every day, but there is no fixed time to it. Sometimes it may rise at 7, sometimes it may rise at 6.30, but it does occur every day. And hence we can conclude that sunrise is a periodic phenomenon. Let us apply the same logic in this table, we can see that the first element is hydrogen. Now, as I said it earlier, if he finds two elements have similar properties, he'll place them one below the other. And if he finds two elements has dissimilar properties, he will place them on the side. So now, next element after hydrogen is lithium. He found that lithium has similar properties to that of hydrogen and hence he placed it below hydrogen. After lithium, the next element is beryllium. He found that beryllium has dissimilar properties to that of lithium and hence he will place it on its side. After beryllium, the next element is boron. Boron had dissimilar properties to that of both lithium as well as beryllium and hence he placed it on the side of beryllium. Similarly went up till fluorine. After fluorine, the next element is sodium. He found that sodium had similar properties to that of lithium and hence he would place it below lithium and so on and so forth he went up till calcium. Now after calcium the next element which was present at that time is titanium. Now the properties of titanium were not similar to that of aluminium but they were similar to that of silicon and hence he placed titanium below silicon. Now as you can see in the table there is a vacant space between calcium and titanium. He left this vacant spaces because he said that these elements were yet to be discovered. Now let us see the pattern in which the properties are repeating. After hydrogen the next similar properties were found in lithium, which is the very next element. Hence, there are zero elements between hydrogen and lithium. After lithium, similar properties are found in sodium. In between lithium and sodium, there are six elements. After sodium, next element which had similar properties is potassium. In between sodium and potassium, there are six elements again. But after potassium, the next similar properties were found in copper. In between potassium and copper, there are nine elements. Now, as we can see, the properties are repeating. That is, you can see after 0, 6, 6 and 9, the properties are repeating, but they are not at fixed interval. 
and hence this justifies the statement of the law which is the properties are periodic functions of their atomic masses that is they repeat but not at fixed interval. Now let us learn the merits of the Mendeley's periodic table. Point number one. His table helped to revise the atomic masses of certain elements and hence change their positions in the table. For example, the atomic mass of beryllium was previously determined as 14.09 delta which later was changed to its current correct value of 9.4 delta and hence the position got changed and it was placed before boron. Point number two. You can see there are many vacant spaces in this table and he said that these elements were yet to be discovered. Now, what makes him such a great scientist? This is because he predicted the properties of these elements that were yet to be discovered. And later when these elements were discovered, their properties were found to be correct. Now, he, I will take the example of first three only, which I have circled you can see it these three boxes he named these three elements as eka boron eka aluminium and eka silicon now what does this word eka mean eka means alternate so now we can see the first box is alternate to boron right and hence he used the name eka boron similarly the box below it which is vacant is alternate to aluminium and hence he called it as eka aluminium and similarly we can see that eka silicon is alternate to silicon later when these elements were discovered they were named as scandium gallium and germanium respectively now i have placed this table of the comparison between his predicted property and the real, the actual properties of the elements. I have taken one example of eka aluminium and gallium. You can see both the properties, the predicted properties and the real properties. Both of them are very close or it is almost similar. And hence this makes him the great scientist. Point number three of his merit is the Noble gases were not discovered at his time, but later when they were discovered, he placed it in his table without disturbing the position of other elements, as you can see. So these were the merits of his Mendeley's periodic table. Now, we all know that Mendeley's periodic table is not used. This is because it has some problems. So let us learn the demerits of Mendeley's periodic table. Point number one, no fixed position was given to hydrogen as it resembles the properties of both alkali metals as well as halogens. Point number two, elements having dissimilar properties were placed in the same group. For example, you can see in the table, manganese is placed with halogens. Point number three, we all know that elements were arranged in increasing order of their atomic masses. But in some places, elements having higher atomic masses were placed before elements having lower atomic masses. For example, in the table, you can see the atomic mass of cobalt is 58.9, which is placed before nickel, whose atomic mass is 58.7. Fourth point. Isotopes were discovered long after Mendeley's periodic table. We all know isotopes are elements which have same atomic number but different atomic masses. And hence these isotopes could not be given a proper place in the periodic table. Due to these four reasons, Mendeley's periodic table was not accepted. So, this was my video on Mendeley's periodic table. I hope every one of you liked this video. If you liked my video, please smash out the like button. If you have any suggestions or any queries, please comment right below. Please share this video with all your friends. Thank you for giving me all your time. I hope everyone enjoyed. Thank you.